Namaste and welcome to React Bits. Today I'm here to talk about Flutter 1.22, the latest recently released stable version of Flutter. Though this version came just after two months from Flutter 1.20 release, it has lots of fixes and tons of new features to talk about. So here I am to talk about those features, talking about in numbers, 3,024 issues were closed, 1,944 PRs were merged, and 197 different contributors contributed to those PRs. The first most important feature of this release is the extensive support for iOS 14 and Android 11. Talking about iOS 14, Flutter now supports Xcode 12. And the Cupertino icon package has tons of new icons from iOS 14. And there is a preview support, not stable yet, but there is a preview support for app clips feature that was introduced in iOS 14. And talking about Android 11, media query and safe area widgets exposes the safe insets of Android notches cutouts and edges of waterfall displays. And next is the soft keyboard appearing animation is now synchronized with the native. Next, Flutter 1.22 brings preview support for Android state restoration. So if you don't know what state restoration is, some of the mobile OSs might kill the app when they are in background to reclaim the resources for other apps that are in foreground. And when this happens, the operating system notifies the app to be killed to save any UI state quickly so that it can be restored when the user cycles back to the app. When implemented correctly, this provides a seamless experience for the user while making better use of the device resources. So with Flutter 1.22, we are able to do that by using restorable mixing okay this restorable mixing allows us to create some restorable variables that we can save and for each variables or fee for each widget flutter creates a storage space and whenever the app restores that storage space that value is restored and we can display that and there are tons of other restorable values like here we are we can see restorable int and there are others like restorable text editing controller and so on but it is still in preview state flutter 1.22 also brings in new set of material buttons a new universe of material buttons this does not modify the existing button this just adds into that we now have text button and text button theme instead instead of the flat button but flat button and raised button they will still work and we have elevated button and elevated button theme instead of raised button and finally we have outlined button instead of outline button so these are the new set of buttons and button theme that we can use you can see this dart pad example which is also provided in the official announcing post of the Flutter 1.22. I'll also provide the link in the description. So this shows how we can use this set of buttons. We can see the next and previous examples here, how these buttons are used. We can see it in dark mode and light mode and we can see different styling of the buttons. So these are the new set of buttons in Flutter 1.22. And for me, this looks already awesome. And I believe this provides a lot more customization and theming instead of the previous ones. Another huge feature introduced in this version is the new internationalization and localization support backed in the Flutter framework itself. So with this, we'll not have to use any external plugins. So right now, even right before this, 
Flutter has always supported internationalization and localization, but this brings in some backed functionalities right in the Flutter framework that we can use. And you can find the extensive documentation here in a Google Docs, the link I'll share in the description. And I'll also make a different video how to implement this in our Flutter application. And along with this, there is a characters package which is now available by default in Flutter 1.22 that helps properly format the Unicode characters and emojis, those kind of stuff. Again, another huge feature introduced in this release is the declarative navigation. Up until now, the navigation API have been in imperative. That is, we could do navigator.push, navigator pop, but we could not see the underlying navigator stack or stack of pages, we could not manipulate them directly. However, Flutter 1.22 introduces this navigator and it looks a lot like Flutter widgets and declarative syntax and we can define list of pages in the navigation stack and we can decide which page to display based on certain conditions so that we can make navigations easier. And again, I'll make a separate video on Navigator 2.0 or declarative navigation, how we can use it in our application. But remember, Navigator 1.0 is not deprecated or is not removed. We can still work with it if we like to stick to it. It's fine. Another huge thing, the platform views or the view that makes user able to host native view in their application now has a stable release and this means that Google Maps and WebView plugins which were in preview now move to stable and you yourself can host your native views properly without any issues. And this is huge bonus for packages like Google Maps and WebView and maybe Firebase AdMob will also benefit from this. With Flutter 1.22.2.10 has also been released and with Dart 2.1, we get a unified Dart tool along with Flutter. Now we have a Dart command using which we can perform actions like analyze, compile, create. We can even run the Dart files or work with packages using the Dart command instead of Flutter command. So now Dart has its own unified developer tool that comes along with the Flutter installation. Another huge feature for app publishers out there, we can now dissect our app size. So we can dissect what is gathering the most size in our application, what is increasing the size of our application by using the new app size tool. And you can find extensive documentation in the Flutter, Flutter official documentation site. So we can use dust dust analyze size flag with commands to build our application like Flutter build APK, Flutter build app bundle, iOS, Flutter build iOS, Linux, Mac OS, all of these, we can supply hyphen hyphen analyze hyphen size flag in order to calculate the artifact size and composition. This also prints out the summary, of the app size. This includes native code, assets, and even a package level breakdown of the compiled Dart code and size of each of those. So let us try the app size tool here. Let me try flutter build apk dash dash app dash dash analyze size. So using this command, this would give us the summary of specify one of the Android ARM, Android ARM 64. Let's try for Android the target platform Android ARM 64. Let's try this. Okay, it's now running. It will take some time. Okay, it took a bit longer than expected. I had to redo it as I forgot the flavor option because my app had different flavor. It did not work. So once this analyze size completes, we can see the summary of 
what is what size is different assets and different codes are taking so we can see that assets our assets is taking 216 kilobytes resources is taking 215 kilobytes i think dex is taking 2 mb our code is taking 6 mb and analyzing this we can see that flutter package is taking 3 mb dot core and there is a package level breakdown as well so for flutter localization package Firebase auth platform interface, those kind of summary. And not only this, this summary is quick view. However, we also have a JSON file somewhere. We must find a JSON file somewhere that provides a detail of this app sizes, which we can later import to dev tools to investigate further. Maybe the information is provided in the using app size tool documentation. So I'll have a separate video again for this as well, as soon as possible. So these are the new most notable features that I have found in the Flutter 1.22 release. And apart from this, there are other features and fixes, bug fixes and other features like network page in DevTools is now updated. We can see response bodies as a part of network tab, it provides ability to search and filter our network tab and dev tool inspector tab is now inbuilt in IntelliJ visual studio code has improved output linking from the start trace in debug console those kind of features here and there and lots of other performance improvements that i guess has come with the flutter 1.22 and for those of you who have published your app that support for iOS 14, it is requested that you rebuild your application with Flutter 1.22 and deploy it again so that your users will have a great experience with iOS 14. Thank you everyone for watching this tutorial. Hope this summary was useful for you to check out features that are interesting to you and try those new features. Let me know in comments. Also, let me know which of these features you'd like to be covered in a separate video with extensive tutorial so that I can decide which features to make videos about in the beginning. Thank you again and see you in the next episode.